Hello, Hello beautiful, beautiful people. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go with a head fake too. Yeah, I know. You tried it. I tried ah. to join on with you. I was going to get it. <laughs> Welcome to Wisdom Bites. <laughs> this is Father Craig Friday. How's it going, Father Craig? It's going great. I'm happy. Good. I'm fat and happy. You're fat and happy. Yeah, Yo, fat and no, happy. I've been like on this like good diet. Well, you even. know what I mean. Like I, I'm, I'm full with happiness. I'm replete with happiness. Oh, okay. I actually okay. don't know the word replete means, but it sounds really cool there. <laughs> it sounds like it might be, it might mean without. Oh. I don't know. Hey Siri, what does replete mean? <laughs> no, it says replay. Ah, oh, I don't know. Some, someone will have to send it to us. Tell <laughs> us what replete comments. means. Tell, tell us what replete means. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh my goodness. That was a good start. Oh, that was awesome. That was like <laughs> that was probably our best go. intro uh, ever. Ever. Probably. Ever. ever. Um, I, want, I want to say something mean to Brianne here, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll leave it for later. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I was like, so this is Father Craig Friday. Ha, and, uh, take that, Brienne. <laughs> like that. So I was gonna I was gonna be Yeah, okay. Okay. Here we are. All right. <laughs> and this is I ruined great. it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our intro was great. Our transition right, needed right. work. Let's keep going. Uh, this is Father Craig Fridays. Father Craig Fridays is the time when you can send in your questions and Father Craig and I will discuss them. Okay. So last week we took on a very big topic. Okay. Um, but this week we're gonna go back to our normal format. All right. Let's just do a fun question, I three like real it. questions. Let's do it. And rock and roll father craig macaroni and cheese right no and <laughs> i didn't ask the question okay yet. ask the question okay. macaroni and cheese and other assorted dishes containing macaroni should they be eaten with a fork or with a spoon assorted dishes like assorted nuts like <laughs> assorted dishes like okay, hamburger okay. helper if or, it has the consistency where it can be eaten with a fork and you can get most of it use a fork if it has like juices that you need to include in it that are more moist and wet, you need a spoon. Okay. So with your mac and cheese, are you a fork or a spoon guy? I'm probably a fork for mac and cheese. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But I'm not a big mac and cheese guy. Oh. So I'm, I'm okay to leave a little bit in the bowl. <laughs> there you go. Cool. I actually like, as I'm writing this question, I didn't know what I, I don't know. I probably just grabbed the first thing that like, oh yes, this time a spoon will work and next time a fork will work. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. much how it goes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I eat pie with a spoon. Oh, that works. That's yeah. good. Because okay. then you can hit like All this with your ice and, cream. Like, and, and, ice cream oh, too. Yeah, that's good. Winning. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes I eat eggs with a spoon. That's a little weird. But that's because I use the spoon to put coffee grounds in and I don't want to get a f- spoon and a fork dirty. Okay. And so I just want to reuse the spoon. I respect that. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Let's move right in. And to, now you know. <laughs> let's move right into uh, our user. User generated is not the right word. The questions are uh, listeners sent in. <laughs> i don't know how to word um, uh, let's let's go and ask our user generated <laughs> questions <laughs> Shh, you're making okay. it worse uh, <laughs> did you Continue. you're embarrassing me that's good um, dad um oh. what does it mean that priestly celibacy is a gift from god okay okay um so is this in combination with the um the next com- question yes too? so th- okay. the same person sent in these both of these okay let's, let's put them together because i think it works together cool yeah what does it mean that priestly celibacy is a gift from god okay and then father greg gerhardt said in his third year of seminary there was the most beautiful woman that walked by him and he prayed and prayed about whether he should leave seminary or not god answered him then or god answered him that even this woman could not make him as happy and satisfied as god could father craig did you have a similar moment or moments of knowing you chose correctly in God. Great questions. Okay. So, um, so what does it mean that celibacy is a gift from God? So the gospel is not something to be accepted with sort of resignation. Like, Oh, I guess, uh, I guess I, if I'm going to be Christian, I have to accept that. Mm-hmm. It's part of the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay. So if God is calling us to something, it is a gift from him. It's actually our path to human happiness, to flourishing something deeper than just sort of that superficial happiness. Mm-hmm. Um, rather it, it's something that's going to lead us to a deeper intimacy with God, um, with, with, uh, the communion of the body of saints, uh, the body of Christ, the communion of saints um and so celibacy is a similar thing sometimes we think oh in order to be a priest you have to give up marriage you have to oh you have to you just have to sort of accept that if you want to be a priest 
And some people do treat it that way, which I think is an incredible impoverishment of uh, the gift of celibacy, um, of being a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven, right? That rather, God actually gave it to me as a, a form of freedom, that I might be more free to receive love from God and return that love to God with the whole of my life. And so celibacy becomes a gift in that sense, um, that it's an opportunity for, for me to more fully receive God's love and uh, to give that love. And like Father Greg, who had this experience where, with the Lord where he sees the most beautiful woman and he realizes in that moment that uh, not even her, she, her, she this not person, she will... yeah, I, I, grammar, wor- <laughs> words are hard. Words hard, yes. Words hard, <laughs> words hard. Okay, and um, you know that, that um, she would not uh, fulfill this, this deepest desire that's in his heart. Now, this is true for every human person, that only God can fill the God desire in us. Um, now, does God use uh, the relationships with other people? Yes, absolutely, because it's not just me, Jesus. It's me, Jesus, and the whole body of Christ. The mm-hmm. Lord desires that that uh, unity. But through people, he shows his love often, but he means to draw our minds and hearts to him. And so no husband and no wife can ever satisfy fully the, wife, uh, the, li- the heart um, and the desire of their husband or wife, right? Um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> But for priests in a very particular way and religious sisters and brothers who embrace this gift of celibacy from the Lord, um, that, that is very acute. And it, and, it, and it is meant to give witness to this truth that's true in marriage, but maybe not as easy to see because you have someone else there um, to share that life with. But for the priest, religious sister, religious brother, um, it's more visible. And that's kind of the point. Gotcha. Is that it's meant to be more visible, more manifest that poverty, chastity, and obedience, which are so countercultural, point us out of the world to God. And so celibacy is a gift because it um, gives me in its place sort of this physical intimacy, now an opportunity in my life, a space in my life for God and to look to him to fulfill, which maybe in a marriage I might simply look to my wife to fulfill. Um, and so Father Greg has this experience and he sees this beautiful woman and the Lord reminds him of this truth. Mm-hmm. And that's a consolation. It's a recognition that, wow, I'm, I'm not lacking anything in Jesus Christ. I'm not lacking a thing. Um, and so I did have a similar moment. I was actually in Michigan with my family, and we were on the beach. And there's a beautiful white sand beach in Grand Haven, Michigan. And uh, it's powder sand. It's a beautiful lake. It's a beautiful day. And everyone goes down there. And there's lots of beautiful ladies running around down on the beach. Okay. And I was walking through and I suddenly remembered what it was like when I was there in college and I was so distracted because I wanted all the girls' attention, right? And I wanted to, you know, and I suddenly realized in this moment walking down the beach with my dad that I was free, that I didn't have to worry about those things anymore. And I had everything I needed in the Lord. And I was like, oh, this is really a gift from God. And I'm not lacking anything. In fact, this is part of the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of chastity, right? And so um, it really was this beautiful moment, and it's become a source of uh, communion with God. Those aches of loneliness are actually meant to draw us deeper into a solitude of prayer with the Lord. And, um, you know, you'll experience that in marriage as well, but it's not always manifest there because you do have um, a wife or a husband and those sorts of things. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My heart is so full hearing you tell <laughs> that story. That's amazing. Good. Excellent. <laughs> cool. Thanks All for sharing right. that, Father Craig. Um, and finally, our third question. Ooh. Um, Father Craig, what are the rules with priests and wearing their clerical shirts? And what is in Father Craig's wardrobe besides clerical shirts? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, you should wear a shirt as a priest. <laughs> so, so is every shirt a clerical shirt then? No, it says oh, okay. clerical dress, but that can vary by custom. Okay. So canon law uh, says that priests are, uh, should wear clerical dress. Um, and uh, that there could be exceptions to this in particular time and circumstance. So, for example, I know that sometimes um, there's there's some... Um, so there's historical context to some of this. So, for example, in Mexico, um, maybe priests don't always wear clerical dress. And part of that reason is because the priests were gathered together around the 1920s and many of them were killed for being priests. And so maybe you don't want to mark yourself so clearly as a priest and that may carry on in the culture to a certain extent. Um, But canon law asks us to wear clerical garb and that has varied from time and circumstance. So one of of the more traditional ways in the the Roman uh, Catholic church is a cassock. 
S, which is a long black dress looking thing with a bunch of buttons and the yeah. collar. And you might wear a fascia and you might wear the hat called a beretta, um, those sorts of things. And that's um, a traditional form um, kind of developed with sort of the more modern age would be more of the business attire look, mm-hmm. uh, which you might see the suit coat and jacket and things and the like. Um, other places it may be, so India, it's very hot, um, not as much uh, AC, um, white where might be the garment often wear worn um, rather than the black. Okay. Um, and uh, so there's different forms of clerical dress, but it's really meant to be determined by local custom. So really the bishop of your diocese kind of sets it. And there's sort of a common thing within, for example, the um, the American church is really expected to be black with a white collar. Okay. Um, but every every diocese can sort of set that policy a little differently. Okay. And uh, in some places, deacons will wear the clerical dress as well because they're clerics. Yeah. Um, but in our diocese, we don't want to confuse between permanent diaconate and uh, the transitional diaconate, those who are being ordained as priests. And so our, our deacons are asked not to wear clerics, except in a ministerial circumstance where it might be important to identify yourself in that way. So, for example, going to the, the prison system okay. might be good to wear clerics as a deacon so that they recognize who you are and uh, open some doors as well. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's kind of some of the rules around uh, wearing clerical dress. Now, theologically, you know, what is it all about? Well, uh, the collar is a symbol of obedience, that I'm meant to be a slave of Jesus Christ, servant of Jesus Christ in that way. Um, So there's an obedience that I've made to my bishop and his successors um, as my local representative of the person of Jesus. I'm obedient unto him as to the Lord. Um. And, uh, you know, maybe the colors can mean things. Sometimes we um, subscribe a certain meaning to the color black, you know, and the like. I think that was probably just a practical choice, but I might be wrong there. You know, okay. it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I think also, you know, that uh, there's been some theology imbued into things like the cassock. The number of buttons would be like 33, 33. for the, the number of years that Christ lived. Uh, these sorts of things. So, um yeah, there's some some stuff kind of surrounding that, but you know, it's it makes you visible, it helps people know that who you are and what you. I mean, I wear my clerics, and people call me father, you know. And mm-hmm. I, just last week, I was going uh, a while back, I was going to this wedding um, out in Tennessee, which I mentioned in last week's show. Um, and uh, I was in the airport, and this woman's walking by, and she's she's elderly, she's very sad. You can tell uh, going to the airport, and she looks at me, and goes, "Father, are you a Catholic priest?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm a Catholic priest." my daughter's dying of COVID and I am going to see her and, and she's my little girl and she's 52 um, named Bonnie and uh, her name's Lupita. Um, and she says, um, she starts sharing it with me right there. And we prayed together and I promised to pray for her daughter. And now you can too. Yeah. Um, and uh, all because of wearing clerics. Wow. Glory to yeah. God. Yeah. Like, wow. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's, that's why. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a a symbol, a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but you don't have to wear your clerical shirt all of the time. Your clerics. No, sometimes I can not wear it. Um, so what would be for you? Is there a set rule for how this is? Showers. (laughs) (laughs) No, usually I'm usually on my day off and I'm not working or something like that. Or I'm doing an activity where I need to, um, you know, sweat. So exercise, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I'm going to do yard work or something like that, I'll wear something else. So just practicality. If I'm going fishing, I'm not going to wear my clerics usually. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I know a priest that uh, he'd wear his clerics hunting. Uh, yeah. So then, some do. Uh, well, then his uh, hunting buddies would clean the deer for him. So then, <laughs> oh, we don't want to get, you to get your clerics all, all messed priests, up. they're all priests, that doesn't work. Yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so what else is in your closet? Anything exciting? Um. Not really. <laughs> Lots know. of cargo pants. Yeah. You know, just, I like hiking pants a lot, yeah. honestly. And then I got a bunch of free t-shirts, you know, and there you go. yeah, I, pr- I look pretty much like I'm a college student because my wardrobe hasn't really changed since college because <laughs> then I became a priest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of nice formal non priest stuff. It's yeah. usually when I'm dressing formal, it says a priest. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. I think awesome. I have one tie because I've had to go to a couple of weddings and funerals and non priest attire for family when it's not a Catholic wedding or something. Oh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that, Father Craig. Sure. That's good stuff. It was a lot about like your personal stuff today. I uh, know. That was kind of fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Father Craig, uh, please be sure to send those in to podcast at txstatecatholic.org. And that could be about him or could be about theology questions or anything else. Any yeah. Other? You can ask me like my favorite color, 
favorite food, <laughs> like coffee, <laughs> anything, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if you'd like to be on our other segment of Wisdom Bites, Testament Tuesdays, uh, please be sure to reach out to me at podcast at txstatecatholic.org as well, and uh, we can get you on the schedule to be on Testament Tuesday. And finally, be sure to follow us on Instagram at O-L-O-W-T-X State. Uh, there we've got a lot of great content coming out there. And uh, it's a great way to stay up to date with all the things happening at Our Lady of Wisdom. And finally, uh, if you liked this episode, be sure to give us a thumbs up and share it so that your friends and family can watch it too. Fantastic. Thank you so much, David. And goodbye, beautiful people. <laughs> Our Lady of Wisdom. Pray for us. Great.